good morning and compliment of the season to you from the city of Abuja. And welcome to the Advent Cable Network Nigeria. This is another exciting edition of Now Streaming, your morning talk show where we address burning issues, celebrate good news, and discuss topics that have the potential to change our lives. I am your host, Smart Simon. And I have with me this morning in the studio, Chief Engineer Oba Clement Ehigiato, African Democratic Congress, ADC, FCT Chairman. Also with us is Honorable Mike Chooks Wonsu. He is a councillorship candidate for Usman Ward, Buari Area Council. You're welcome, sir. Yeah, Thank you. God bless you. Viewers, we will be discussing the trending news for this morning, Wednesday, the 15th of December, 2021. Do remember to call in and also send in your comments and questions through the phone number showing on your screen and via our social media platforms. It's always a pleasure to hear from you. And our first story is UK bows to diplomacy scrape controversial rate lease. The United Kingdom has removed the travel restrictions placed on Nigeria and other and 10 other countries due to the Omicron COVID-19 variant. The British High Commission announced this yesterday. The UK diplomatic mission say all the 11 countries, including Nigeria, were removed from the COVID-19 rate list uh, from today. So, your thought on this? Let me start with Honorable. Um, that, I think that's a very good one. Nigeria plays a very vital role in the global community. Mm. And uh, it's a good one indeed. It's a good one. Almost uh, every country in the world would love to socialize with Nigeria. Nigeria will have every potential, every necessary things to play. And besides, even in Africa, Nigeria is a very vital country that they don't do without us. If uh, placing a ban on Nigeria, I think it will even affect the rest of the Africans. Yeah. So it's a very good development. Thank you. Uh, Chief. Yeah, to me, really, where they do the needful, I didn't even see the reason in the first place why we were placed on uh, that band. But I thank God they battle the, the pressure, although the National Assembly actually uh, take it upon themselves to, to react immediately when it was uh, placed. Because if you look at it, the basis of even putting Nigeria, when you talk, the most African country that respond to COVID 19. Uh, protocols and uh, you know Nigeria was among the, the, the first uh, five so the reason why they did that in the first place was also a shock it but now that they have lifted it glory be to God I think they, they discovered that uh, Nigeria is a, is a powerful country despite the, the the bad leadership one way or the other but at least but one of these days will get there yeah because um, Omicron COVID-19 variant is not from Nigeria. Not at all. And COVID-19 in its entirety was never a problem to us compared to European countries. So we should rather be banning European uh, Europeans yeah, from yeah, coming into, into the country this problem we are facing. than them banning us from going because we don't have this problem. In, in when, when this COVID-19 was, was actually hitting them, hundreds of thousands were dying. Yeah. But up to now, we are under 3,000. Yes. Yes. Okay? And most of the people that have actually died in Nigeria, they will say complications, complicated related issues. So it's not really that this thing. We are not denying it. Oh, I am not denying it. It's there. COVID-19 is there. And is is really really devastating nations of the world, but we don't have that much in this country, Definitely. so yeah. we shouldn't be facing this kind of thing. Yeah. And it's good that finally 
uh, they have decided to remove Nigeria from the red list. I saw a plane traveling back to UK with only two passengers in the, in the, in the cabin. It's also affecting the economy. And, uh, of course, uh, it will uh, affect the economy. The next uh, story is um, Asu Takos Nas over Jumbo Pay says no going back on strike. The Academic Staff Union of University has tackled members of the National Assembly for earning between 1.5 million and 1.3 million era monthly to the detriment of professors with 116,000 monthly take home. Uh, so the Zona Coordinator of ASU, Lagos Zone, Odokoya, said this on Tuesday while addressing journalists at the end of the Zona meeting of the Union Health at Federal University of Agriculture, Abekuta, Fonap, Ogun State. Uh, so let me, let, let me start with engineer. Uh, you see, that is why we've not gotten it right. You can see the amount of money won. National Assembly takes home. On what, 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 okay, the lecturer that is building a nation academically, a professional, don't earn even up to 15 or 20 percent of that amount of money. Mm -hmm. But you can mention that amount and you find out that infrastructure, so many things is going bad in this country. So I just feel and I believe if they are taking this direction, they should stand and make sure they get the result. Okay. Yes. All right. So, Honorable. <laughs> uh, well, <coughs> Nigeria, here we are. All these problems up and down. Uh, we have prayed enough. The issue of uh, God will save us, God will save us, is no longer there. It's action. Just as my, my brother rightly said, a country that is made up of timbers and caliber, those that have all it takes to salvage this country. I believe that uh, the Jumbo Prize or take home by National Assembly persons, leadership is all about service. And until we begin to think of leaders that give selfless service, before you get into that position, I think you are very, they are all comfortable. So the need for Jumbo take home, while a professor, a lecturer in the university, who, of which many of them pass through, and they sit comfortably dining with the Nigerian money and living those. So I, I, I say if only the action can be implemented, what they need, National Assembly, the government, the executive, the judiciary, and all arms of government, they have to come on a round table discussion with us to let's have this thing once and for all solved. I think it will go a long way. Because not just that they are insisting, at the end of the day, after mega discussion, they will call off the strike if they embark on strike. After a while, it will surface again. So why can't this thing be solved once and for all? Mm. All right. Thank you so much. Um, for those of us who are conversant with the university environment, and we know what the lecturers are putting in. You move from one lecture theater to another. You are facing sometimes 100, sometimes 200, sometimes 500 students projecting your voice to impact knowledge in them so that they will come out to be better people in the society. And then you have senators and uh, honorable members of the House of Reps. They are there. Some of them will not even sponsor one bill for four Sorry. years, no Sorry. bill. Sorry. Some of them will not say anything. Some of them sleep while section is on, on. And they will receive all of this amount, leaving the lecturers to suffer. I think that we are getting it wrong. And with this, Please, they should continue and ensure that they get, get it, it right. right.
this point. And if I will ask Honorable uh, um, Honorable Mosu, uh, you are a candidate. Okay, suppose that you have been elected as the honorable member of the House of Representatives or a senator. Are you sure you are not you are, you are going to uh, you are not going to collect this money and keep quiet? Will you will you ask them? Will you sponsor a bill reduce the salary for legislators or senators or make it part time? Let's just come and offer our services to Nigeria so that we get Nigeria right. Will you do that? <laughs> Thank you, my brother. God will help us. Amen. Uh, the truth is that uh, vying for elective position is to render service to humanity and mm. to our country. Uh, a single person, they say uh, a tree cannot make a forest. That's true. In National Assembly today, there are many that are taking this money just that there's nothing they could do. Many, they propose a bill, they sponsor the bill, and it dies in arrival. Mm. So, it's not as if uh, in the National Assembly, when we are talking about National Assembly, National Assembly, that is all inclusive. There are, we have exceptional personalities who feel the pains of Nigerians. Yes, talking about oh, the possibility of make it a, making it a, a part-time, it has to be enshrined into the, the law, the constitution. It is not all about standing up, moving motion, when the rest of people don't back you. So it's only, yes, if I, I happen to be one of them, I will be part of those who move the motion and who is also a bill for it to be made a part-time. So that in U.S., in Western world, members of the National Assembly, they are on part-time basis. They have their businesses running. When it's time for them to come for sitting, they come for sitting and they go with whatever allowances they have because they are caught and before coming out, they have decided to render service to their nation. Mm. It is all about serving the nation, not the nation serving you. Them. And also, mind you, I was in a, a seminar yesterday when uh, one of the guest speakers said that leadership, the people eating money is not their money. That you work to earn money, what you earn is Nigerian money. And what you spend is Nigerian money. Because I was born without 10 kobo in my pocket. So whatever you have grown, you have em empire everywhere, you have companies, that money that is being coming out is Nigerian money. So it needs to be used judiciously. Mm -hmm. So my brother, I think uh, these are the things. It is also high time for us to think of uh, leaders, leaders that will have the mind of Nigerian at heart. Mm -hmm. By the time we get them, and how do we get them? It's you and it's me. We cannot stay in the comfort of your zone. And they're talking about bad leadership. Come out to vote, you don't come. Mm. And when you're asked to come, you said, no, yeah, vote, don't, vote, don't count. Let it not count, but vote. Exactly. So this is the only way we can get things working in this country. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And we pray that people like you will get you into this position. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. Because in Nigeria, if you are speaking... Uh, a lone voice most of the times you are not likely to be able to get the position you 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 are vying for nigerians want people who will speak with this mouth yeah. and then do the other way not people this time exactly not so this time 2023 is coming god will help us Amen. to actually Amen. choose good people who will go there Amen. and only think about nigeria Amen and not just their pockets. The next trending news is um, from Lagos. Lagos monthly rental will ease burdens, residence burdens. The Lagos state government has said all the modalities for the commencement of a monthly rent payment scheme will commence soon. The special advisor to Lagos state government, governor, on housing, Mrs. Toke Benson Awoyinka disclosed this during discussion on rental policies at the just concluded second Lagos rental 
estate marketplace. According to the special advisor, the new initiative will greatly ease the burden of yearly payment on residents, just as she assured the landlords will get their annual pay of house rent up front. Uh, let me start with you, uh, engineer. Do you think th this should extend to Abuja, where the rent has to be on a monthly basis, not annually? Why not? I would like <laughs> ignorance. <laughs> but I want to see it work out in Lagos first. Okay. You know, Nigeria, this is not the first time we hear this kind Good of policies, uh, right? Know, the, the political <coughs> way to make it work is our challenge. Now, let's actually see if it will happen. It will actually, at least, every month, it's even better you get your money. Sure, every month and this back and front. You know, those days in Lagos, you see how landlord and tenants, they go to kangaroo lawyer and throw people's load out. You know? But I believe uh, we, are, we are actually moving. I pray that the leaders of... Uh, this policy and in Lagos State, they will, they will implement it. And uh, so, when we see, I will be the most happier person if it comes to Abuja because there are so many estates here. Yes. That people are not able people are to. not living in. And uh, you find out that. Uh, Sorry, we have a caller online. Pastor Harry. Yeah, good morning, gentlemen in the house. Good, good morning. morning. I wish you a happy Christmas in advance. Good, good morning. Happy yes. Christmas to you yeah. as well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. The few contribution I would want to make is with regard to this jumbo payment to the politicians. If we have leaders that want to build this particular country, we should think about how to fix the politics of this particular nation. Because every nation rises or falls based on its political setting. Now, just as we can see, that most politicians are just going there for their welfare. Just maybe what they can get from the nation, or not what they can give to the nation. So if we can sit on the round table, decide what should be the salary of a, of a, a, a politician, it will be better. So the capable ones will go there for the representation, not any people fighting to be there, killing to make sure they will be there, knowing as they go there, they will make millions of naira. So, All right, thank so, you so much, should be done. Henry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I sir. want to thank you. Really, um, like he said, will the politician? That is why I'm having a problem with the youth. I'm having a problem with Nigerians. Mm. This change of leader we have had since independence, this is why they always fight to go back there. Because they know themselves. Despite you see them like having one or two in the newspaper, and they are not fighting. Though. When the last ceremony uh president Buhari, you find out that they put all party aside they were all there the chance of leader we have if nigeria can decide and let fresh nigeria that have what it takes to govern selfless servant selfless service we will get it right but this politician will not even allow these people that have this good will, those good mind to serve this country to come on board that is mm -hmm. our challenge Yes. Uh, just as uh, Pastor Henry said, <coughs> my brother, Nigeria will have a series of roundtable discussions. Mm. Series of them. What we lack here is implementation. What we lack is implementation. I agree with him completely. It's high time the structures we have, we put them in place is leadership. A call for leadership is called to serve. It is not all about what you have or you should get. It's all about what you can offer. And good name is better than silver and gold. Mm. Look at many of them to today. They cannot move freely even after serving. They can move freely because yeah. you have looted. Just hold on. We have a caller. Mr. Samuel yeah. from Yola. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Yes, sir. My regards to everybody. Happy Christmas in advance. Thank you, Marcos. Hello? Yeah, Hello. we can hear you. Please go ahead. All right. Good morning. Good morning Good to morning. you. Please, my contribution is to the 
Yes, my condition is the salary on ASCO. The issue we have in the country is because who we elected to look at say of the country are not sincere. The purpose of the country is they went for the interest of the money to take it into their hands, not to look into the state of the country. The political party has become a business. Why am I saying this? Is because you find for a position, do not merit it. Merit in the sense that you don't have the interest of the country. So what they come, they can pick and law people to vote. And when they enter into the house, they turn a tiger. The tiger in the sense they want to take off the money <coughs> themselves. The issue of looking at what is done in the election committee does not block them. How much is the student does not block them. A lot of things because we elected long. I could remember even the leader, the head of the country, was saying that when the elected came into the house, that they would sit in their own constituency and look into the other of the country without coming to Abuja. But for now, what is happening? All of them are in Abuja. They even forgot about their constituency. So, issue of salary base is if we want people that are in Nigeria, they should scrap their mentality. They are brain for people to control this country. Not the security. Yes. So, please. The country is all right. Thank you. Say, thank you so much, Mr. Samuel. You, I think you have made your point. Thank you so much. We don't have all the time. Yeah, um, it's just trying to talk about uh, the issue of electing right people into the position. And the, th the point is, you will know those who are right because what he's telling you may not necessarily be what is in his mind. Uh, but, uh, yeah, even at that, I beg to. I agree with you that uh, you hardly can know. It's easy for us to identify good persons. Very easy. Than bad <clears throat> ones. Than even bad ones. <laughs> it's also easy to figure out bad ones. You are, family, you are a father of three. You should be able to know how your children are. Exactly. So in the community where we find ourselves, hmm. we should be able to identify who is who. If your base, basic salary cannot be enough for you. Your overtime can do nothing. So we should be able to identify the people we want them to run. <clears throat> Check history. Go by record. My brother is not being seated here because I'm a contestant. It's not what, what is my, my concern. My concern is that I should have something to offer. Hmm. And before now, I know that my coming is because people have discovered that, yes, I have something to offer. If not being in government, you are doing this. When you get there, you do better. All various meetings we attend, you are, you, you, they, they, when you are able to speak what the people want and stand for what is right, then people will also identify you. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, viewers, uh, we continue to encourage you to, to please call in for your comment and contributions uh, on these very important issues that affect us as Nigerians. Uh, so uh, the next is on the issue of loans. Uh, we have two trending news, and I will take them together. Uh, she will sign it, slams NAS for approving Buhari's loan without hassle. Nigerian government borrowed 2.5 trillion in three months as debt stock hit 38.005 trillion. Uh, let me quickly read this uh, headline uh, and see who, what is there. Uh, really, really, Nigeria total public debt rose by 2.5 Four trillion from thirty-five, 
from 35.469 trillion at the end of the second quarter of 2020 to 38.005 trillion at the end of the third quarter. Statistics released by the Debt Management Office indicated that the debt comprised total external and domestic debts of the federal government. 36 states government and the Federal Capital Territory, FCT. The DMO explained that the increase of 2.540 trillion when compared to the corresponding figure of 35.465 trillion at the end of second quarter 2021 largely accounted for by $4 billion euro bond issued by the federal government in September. <coughs> so, borrowing, borrowing, borrowing. Let me start with Honorable. These headlines. Do you agree with Senator Shewusani? Completely. I take you back when we're talking about good leaders. The bad ones don't allow the good ones to surface. Mm. You remember when he was in the National Assembly? Yes. He moved and sponsored good bills. And he stand, to, he stand for what is right. Such person, even despite that they knew that his people were voting in. So the best that could happen to them against him was to kill him on arrival. If he has clinched a ticket for the party, there's no how he wouldn't have won his election. Now, what is happening? He's no longer there to sponsor a bill. So, it is also high time that Nigeria should know that it is Nigeria first before any other person. I agree with him. I agree with him completely. All right. So, the debt has raised. <laughs> totally. You know why they always remove this kind of people from the house? Because if they are there, like... These are the people disturbing us not to get the what we naturally need in the house. Like Edino Milai. There are so many of them like that. They will deny them ticket because these are the people that the people will always want to vote in. At the end of the day, like Sani, Senator Sani, if you know what he passed through in Kaduna with the head of the government today, you find out that such a thing will even scale most Nigeria. Not to, like they say, politics is dirty. But this time around, I want to tell Nigerians, enough is enough. This prayer will be praying. Pray. God is expecting <coughs> we to do the needful. Do our own part. He will not say yes. So we must wake up. And that is why we are standing out. Like he just said, in a society where you come from, you, we know the good people. We know people that will say, I will have something to do in our community today. They are always there. They work selflessly. Such people are the people that are supposed to come to the government's body and they will work. You don't give what you don't have. Mm -hmm. And you don't play something or nothing you expect it to stand. It is those people that you see they will scare them. They will threaten them. And the family member will not say, I beg go, please enter house. That is why you find out that. Most all our elective officers, let me just say 70% of them, they are, they are not. So, the government is borrowing and then nothing much to show for it. Infrastructures, security, and otherwise. People are dying every day. Uh, I read a story, I think either this morning or yesterday, of how the bandits attack Moss in Sokoto, Sokoto yeah. and the Sultan of Sokoto had to run through the window yeah. to escape the bandits. So this is happening in this country. And so, I don't know, our security agents are ill-equipped. So, and then they are not given the proper motivation they, with which they need to be able to fight these people and all that. And among them, they also, I think there is infiltration here and there and all that. So these are some of the challenges that we have. You see, 
it, they say there is nothing wrong with borrowing, but when you borrow, you must invest it in capital let's project. See, let's see. Uh, so that Nigerians will be able to see it, that indeed what was borrowed was properly used. But where it is borrowed and the money finds its way into somebody's pocket is actually uh, quite bad. Now, let, 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 let us take the last two trending news and we'll move on. Delta government inaugurates committee to enforce anti-open grazing law. And finally, the National Security Advisor Liz three Islamic sponsors of terror group in Nigeria. I would like, to, I would like us to dwell on that story. Let me read uh, the detail of what he said. The National Security Advisor, Major General Baba Ghana Mongono, retired, has identified at least three groups he said are propping the activities of terrorist organization in Nigeria and the Sahel. They include Jamaat Nasro Islam Wal Muslimi, the Islamic and Muslimi and, and Muslims support group, an Islamic state in Greater Sahara. Mongono was speaking on Tuesday in Abuja at the 14th workshop of the League of Ulamas, preachers and imams of Sahel countries. The the NSA, who urged the Islamic preachers and, and imams to use their exalted position to rally support for ongoing counterterrorism operation, also observed that the alliance between the cleric and security forces should be the backbone to rebuilding a terrorism-infested community. Yes, uh, Honorable, this is coming from the National Security Advisor. And from the, the three names mentioned, all of these names belongs to Islamic religion. And that these people are the people that are sponsoring uh, terrorism in this country. Uh, let me first uh, comment on the data state. Mm. Uh, setting a committee to look into the anti-grazing, that is up to him. He is the chief security officer of his state. If he and he is in charge to determine what is good for the state, it's not all about setting committee. It's all about implementing the report of the committee. So that I wish him good luck. Okay. I wish him good luck on that. Then the other one, I also you talk about the person voicing us now is the chief security advisor of the country. So who am I? <laughs> <laughs> who am I? Those who have the voice to voice, those who are in the position of authority to act, those who have all it takes to implement and enforce. Should do the needful. They should do the needful. So even throwing it to me is a, a kind of trying to put words into my mouth <laughs> because they know what to do when they want to get things done they know what to do yeah so that is my stake on that yes uh, engineer <clears throat> yes you see like the last time we discussed here on this uh, program he just came out and said this so that people will not say ah you understand me so now that you have identified them then what do you do hmm. is it me now the chief of army staff is there, defense staff, you have a control of them. Is it not to, even before coming out here now, mm. that is the first thing to have. You get these people to so question, then before you now come and say, these are the people. And this is what we're doing to tackle them. So this is just, uh, I don't know. <laughs> so let them go, let us hear that when they have identified them, thank God, now they have Run them up so that this is killing and other insecurity in the country mm -hmm. will, will stop. Well, at least this is better. We are in this country when we are told that we are, they are not, when uh, are not the, the, the court in Dubai, yeah. uh, you know, mm. revealed the names of people who were sponsoring yeah. uh, in terrorism Nigeria. in Nigeria. Mm. And Nigerian government come up to say we are not interested in naming and shaming mm. them. 
and all of that and all. At least the National Security Advisor is able to come out clearly and say, these are the people the that names. are sponsoring terrorism in Nigeria. And I think terrible. that they want us to go to war against them. <laughs> <laughs> so the, 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 the people you have mentioned, the security agencies in this country, uh, which all of them are under National Security the Advisor, advisor should do the needful and go after these yeah. people so that let's who are have sponsoring peace uh, so that country. we have peace we because people this. are dying yeah. every day and, and that is it with this story we, we we round it up viewers that's all the headlines we can take this morning we shall be going on a short break and when we return we'll be looking at the topic for discussion government and the citizens who is serving who and this is the part two of this discussion. Please stay tuned. You're welcome back. And in case you're just joining us, this is the now streaming program on ACNN TV. Viewers, you can be part of the discussion by calling in through the phone line showing on your screen or sending in a message or comment via text or our social uh, media handles showing on your screen. The primary duty of every government is to protect the lives and properties of its citizens. But we are forced to ask if the Nigerian government are taking responsibility for their primary duties or the res or reverse is the case. Viewers with this, we welcome you to the discussion segment where we'll be looking at the topic, the government and the citizens, who is serving who, part two. So months ago on this program, we looked at the topic, but, we didn't al but time did not allow us to discuss extensively on it. Today, our guest will continue the discussion on the topic from where we stopped the last time. Still with us in the studio, our chief engineer over Clement Ehegiato and Honorable Mike Chooks Mosu. You're welcome once again. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for being here. Yes, uh, so let me start with you, Honorable. Looking at the recent happening in the country, will you say Nigerian government are taking responsibility for their primary duties or reverse is the case? <laughs> Thank you, my brother. Nigeria government, I, if you ask me, I will tell you that they are taking responsibility because once you are failing and you, you keep failing and you keep sustaining it, you are taking responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> you are taking res responsibility. So <clears throat> the reverse really being the case is because they say when two elephant fights, the grass suffers. So it's the electorate that are suffering in this, in this case. We have done the best they can. The electorate has done the best they can to put in a government they believe that can change their life. Nigeria is a very beautiful country. A very law-abiding country. What do they need? What do we need? Just give us a very good enabling environment. Give us light. Make, let the economy be good. Give us security. Yes, the reverse being the case is because as an ordinary person, I don't have security. What we pay, the taxpayer's money, is what we are talking about. And the essence of paying task is to, for you to go back to the people in area of security, basic amenities. We don't have you can you remember our previous discussion we talked about Lagos state government trying to cut down the rent. My brother said yes, he's waiting for that, but it's a good it's a good startup. If government begin to design programs that we elevate, at least make Nigerians averagely comfortable, you'll be able to afford what your immediate needs Ah, My brother, two of us who are just maybe middle class, you know what we pass through. So, government, uh, I wouldn't also say 
the reverse being the case or reverse not being the case is for the government to do the needful. Let them try to cushion the effect of all this uh, hardship Nigeria is passing. That mm. is all. So, uh, I'm sure you agree that reverse is the case. Yes. Instead, they serve themselves and not the people. Uh, so, <coughs> I want you to add to what he has said. Apart from protecting lives and property, property are there other things that the government are expected to do so that you can comment on the things he has said and then possibly add some of these things that you think government should be the responsibility of the government? Uh, thank you, viewers. Uh, thank you. The Nigeria Constitution put it at least one of the first security shelter. Now, the reverse is the case. They are not doing any of this. You find out that we, the electorate, we provide most everything for ourselves. Mm. Is it transport system that is working? Is it electricity that is working? We have people pay bills. They are not consuming. Estimated billing. Mm. Most times, you find out it is even the people that will go one or two to even put the facilities in place. Then the so-called provider will come. Can you also tell me which one of the responsibility government is as a strike in the constitution that they are meeting up with? No. Is it healthcare? Is it transport? Is it education? You find out that your uh, uh, education now, more 80% is private. They are still exploiting the common one. It's not everybody can afford the government school. Private school, I mean. You find out that in that area, government has failed in education. Is it water? Tell yeah. me, just, security. just hold on. We have a working. caller, Mr. Samuel from Yola. Hello, Mr. Samuel. Good morning. Yes, thank you, sir. Up again for the second time. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Please, yeah, I want to speak on the Is government serving us or we are not serving government? I love this topic. So, the truth is, is the citizen serving the government? Yes. One, the government are not doing anything to help the citizen. Are we talking of electricity? Exhibited, exhibited. Are we talking of communication and other networks that we are paying money? Government are not reducing the effort. What government are coming from the city? The 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 two roads, sir. I mean, they try on doing the business. Is that the only thing government should do to a citizen? Are we talking of? See, some government are helping by paying money for our aid. Other state governments are not free. When they have citizens, there are a lot of things citizens are paying just as they are trying to pay for it. It's not giving us any help. So, in my final conclusion, please, the citizens are taking government, not government taking all right, thank you so much, Mr. Samuel, for your comments. So let me come back to you. You are still saying some things, but let me add this. I don't know whether you are aware that in AMAC, Abuja Municipal Area Council, in some of our communities, those communities have to contribute money to be able to buy transformer to replace the bad ones in their area. Putting in mind that this is... Uh, the responsibility of the government actually to have done that. But these people have stayed without life for over six months and nothing has happened. And they have to contribute money to buy transformer themselves. Now, um, you, were, you were talking. Do you think uh, the government is actually serving the people or the people serve, serving the government? Like uh, my brother from Yola said, it is the citizen that is serving the government the other way around. I live in Amak too. I have engaged AEDC on this very topic. Believe you me, if you go to the office, they'll tell you, say, nobody should buy transformer. Yeah. Some time ago, in my community, when they are using it as a business, 
even up to we went to command. You will find out that the lower class of AEDC staff, they call them Nepal 2 or Nepal 3, they will connive with some bad elements in the community. They will compromise the system, taking this time, say, okay, uh, uh, if you people cannot wait, they're going to do something now. Then those bad eggs now, it's a click. They will now begin to go from her to us. Ah, we, if we wait for this, we will not get like to. I think we small, small. And that is where they also feel it's still part of corruption. They will have some percentage to see the same ADC, <coughs> that marketer or engineer. They will say they want to facilitate so that the thing will come fast. After doing all of this, they will still pay for the bill. You see how Nigeria government will close eye for people to be exploited in so many ways. There is no time to discuss. I will show you documents of how I fought in my community to the point I went to as I was in Lugbe High Court on this matter. That this guy will not allow us to do what we want to do. Why, why do you take from the people and you not give them what they pay this money for? Hmm. When is I will give you four copies. AEDC will tell you if you go to their workshop, go to their town hall meetings and all that, they will tell you say nobody. Even we went up to Nigeria Electricity Regulatory Commission, like office, mm -hmm. then uh, borough and whatever. On this, it's just it has been a business in so many communities in Amak. All right, it's not a new thing. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Now, uh, Honorable. I know that forthcoming uh, election is coming up. Uh, I, I don't know whether you are standing in, but should in case, uh, should, uh, suppose you are elected into power, what are the things you would do differently from what we are seeing now? Are there things you think you can do differently? Yes, <coughs> yes. To whom much is given, much is expected. Hmm. What is even there to do differently? I am coming out for a councillorship position. Councillor is the person who represents his ward at the local government. Mm. And what are the basic things that a councillor needs to do for his people? One, one very thing, I will, if I can achieve it, I will be happy, is to be close to the people that elect me time to time listen to them and also at the local government try to divest me after discussing with my people hmm. who elected me upon the ideas the things we have agreed to achieve because you know a councillor is not local government chairman neither is he a governor or a minister it's just a, a council member who contributes in making law for the local government. Yes. So, I will, knowing the problem of my world, where I'm coming from, but even at their problem, it also has to be all inclusive. Various leaders of communities will come together on a right, uh, roundtable discussion and agree on the things needed to be done in the world. But if I can achieve in engaging them, engaging the people, the stakeholders, if I can engage in feeding them back, then in the local government, whatever we want to get as a community, it cannot just be me. My duty as their spokesman there is to lead them to the local government for us to propose or make a proposal on what we need in the community. And I believe that is one basic thing I always think that if it can be gotten, then I know that I have made a mark. All right, thank you so much. Now, let me come back to you yeah, as we are trying to round off because we're out of time. Uh, on Monday the 13th, the governor of Sokoto State urged the president to declare state of emergency in Sokoto State due to the rise in insecurity. <laughs> what is your take on this? And he's the chief security of his state. Hmm. He's the one that actually, the one who wears shoes, know where he pitches him. Is the one begging the presidency to say declare. There are some states that are not even calling for. That is where the presidency wants to go and declare state of emergency. You remember they wanted to declare in Anabra. 
yes. because of election. Yes. When the government has not even said they are having so much. <laughs> you find out that this country, oh God, at times I will just sit down with my clothes and I feel like crying. Now that on Monday, today is Wednesday, now that the governor of a state has Scully, called Scully. for, yes. have you heard any response from the presidency? Not at all. That is the, the problem we are having. Where Nigeria will now begin to leak the content, looking at the content on the back of a spoon and throw the one inside. They will never do things right. Even when they see it very clearly, yes, the ability to do it is the problem. And I pray, like you're asking, what will it do different? That is why we know ourselves in our party. We scream, we look at people, people of like minds. You don't give what you don't have. Before you come, that is why the money backs. They want to belong to these two big party. In the next few months now, they will roll out this money again. Nigeria that have been crying for six years, seven, eight years, they will forget that they were passing through. <laughs> they will still go back and we have a problem. G vote the right person you know. Trust and test it. Put them into the government, you get results. This, our chains of leader will not even want these good people to come in. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, before you say something, let me add that only yesterday, the Sultan of Sokoto had to escape through the window when 38 persons were kidnapped in the mosque by bandits and he has to escape through the window. I learned that he's a retired <laughs> uh, military, a retired general. So these are the problems we are in, we are facing in this country. So, uh, if you can make your submission on yes, that. Yes, um, he just uh, uh, answered that. Chief Secretary of the state is talk, uh, calling for emergency. So, the government, let's leave the government to act on that. Um, I am coming out under the platform of ADC okay. to run for a councillorship position in Usma Ward under Buari local government in Abuja. ADC as a party, it's a platform, not just a party, a platform where you have roots. It is all inclusive. ADC is the only party that is giving the youth 35%, the women 35%, and across board 30%. And a youth who is interested in vying for the position, the ticket is given free. So ADC is one party after the primaries. I can tell you one of the big masquerade that lost primary in his party. He ran to ADC for ticket. The party said no. If we give you a ticket to run, tomorrow you still go back. If you want to join this party, come let us build it together. That is what the party stands for. And that is why we did not go scatting for or, or giving. People are coming with their money. For the party to give them the ticket, the party says no. We must get it right. If we have two or three people who are qualified to run, let us sponsor them, let us support them to run and make a change. So ADC is a party to beat because most of their contestants, most of their candidates, they are all youths. And they, there's one thing they used to call me, they say idea is a talent. We need fresh ideas. Hmm. We need to change the narrative. If your basic salary cannot be enough for you, your overtime cannot be enough at all. So, with you, yes, canvas my people, people, people are supporting me. The reason is because I have been, before now, I've been engaging with them. Okay. So, I cannot do it alone, but together we can. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so, let me quickly come back to Chief Engineer with the figure of the INEC on registered voters and turnout of voters in recent elections, it is obvious that that is voters' apathy. Apart. People will stay away, even after having their voters' card. They stay away from election. And as you have said in part of your contribution, that come out to vote. Don't say your vote will not count. Just do the voting, which is the most important thing. And it's part of the things we have advocated in this program, time without number. Now, will you say the youths are ready to work together 
to take over power in the fourth coming election. Are the youth ready? The youth are ready. Like yesterday, close to you here, in GG Hotel here, we do our national youth summit okay. yesterday. We are actually to engage the youth, mm -hmm. not just sit down and you think your God will come from heaven and do it. No. Why we are still begging the President uh, Muhammad Buharu to sign the Electoral Act into law. That is a starting point. So when he sign it, the INEC is ready. Believe you me, the youth are ready. I'm only using this opportunity to also tell the youth, you, when you overstate in the darkness, you should be able to have some sight to see. Do away with these money bags. It's our money, let's bring it. Yes, if they bring the money, take it, but look at who you are bringing to the power that want to govern you so that you will not keep repeating, you know, Nigeria is moving backward year by year. It is because the same leaders that have been there since it depends whether you like it or not, it's a chain. They are always the one that was okay, go. They are the sponsors. Small, small party that don't have sponsors. Like we stood our ground. God, you know how to do it best. Let's do away with money. But not that we don't have money. I spend my transport coming here. But the problem of Nigerians' youth, let's go where they are sharing money. Hmm. Anywhere they gather for a meeting to 2,000, 33,000 for transport. Where is that money coming from? Definitely when they get to the power, they'll get that money. You can't go to bank and want to talk alone without interest. <laughs> so right. until we do away with such idea, we'll not get it right. All right. So I take that as your last word. Yeah, please. Your, your advice as we round up. My advice is for the electorate to try as much as they can to come and vote. The election that is coming up 12th February 2022, less than two months from today, is not a do or die election. It should be election with focus and purpose for FCT. Let us get it from let us get it right from the grassroots. I call on or I call on my brothers and my sisters, my fellow compatriots. You are PVC, your vote is your power. Come out and vote. Vote your conscience. Vote those whom you believe that can contribute for your interest. Nigeria is one country. Nigeria is bigger than all of us. So you should put your selfishness at the back and think of how you can better Nigeria so that all of us, our children and generation to come, they will have a place that can be, they can be bold to say, yes, I am a Nigerian. Mm. That's my advice. They should ensure that they vote. The era of vote don't count it should no longer be there because there must be a winner at the end of election. Yeah. So you have candidates <clears throat> must want to win, but whosoever wins should be the person the people want rather than being the person imposed on the people. All right, thank you. Uh, well, uh, Engineer Hegato. Chief Engineer Higiato, thank you so much for That's coming, time, for finding our time. Honorable uh, Mike Mosu, thank you so much thank for you very coming. Much. We are very, very grateful that you were able to come and share with us your thought on this matter. Uh, viewers, this is where we call it a day for today's program. Uh, be a law-abiding citizen. Be vigilant if you see something say something and always report criminal acts to the appropriate authority and do good at all times. Do well also to register for your voter's card if you haven't. And if you have registered, do well to get yours. Be a card carrier of a political party and be ready to be actively involved in politics. Governance is for everybody and not some selected few. Remember, God is the ultimate protector and deliverer. Therefore, put your trust in him to will come your way again, same time, same station tomorrow. I am Smart Simon. Have a wonderful and fruitful day, and bye.